তাকে জাম্পে নিয়ে বেরিয়ে গেল তারপরে আমি তখন Suddenly the tiger leaped on my uncle and he dragged him away. I shouted. Still we ran towards it and we followed it for a long time. Then we found my uncle's body lying in the mud. The tiger was just a few meters away, mocking us. Girindra, a boatman and a gatherer of wild honey, was born here in the mangrove of the Sundarbans at the end of the largest delta in the world formed by the Ganges and the Brahmaputra rivers a few hours by boat from Calcutta Sundarbans means beautiful forest This forest has its feet in salt water every day it is inundated by the tides of the Gulf of Bengal Although this wild natural reserve appears to be peaceful, it is home to more than 200 tigers which attack men and are a constant threat to anyone who ventures here. The heat and the flora bring giant Himalayan bees here, and it will soon be time to collect the wild honey representing one of the forest's greatest riches in spite of the danger. In Girindra's village, accessible only by boat, the news has already spread. In this strange decor of briny water and forest, wildlife cohabits with the difficult lives of brave men and women whose ancestors came here less than 2 centuries ago with the help of the gods. Namita, Girindra's wife, knows the danger involved, but respectful of tradition, like the companions of the other honey gatherers, she never talks about it. Every day that the gods grant her, she has prepared the meal with her mother-in-law and her daughters, first for the men and then for the entire family. It consists of the traditional dal a large plate of rice and sauce. Girindra tries to lighten the atmosphere, but everyone understands that the big moment is here. He will have to leave the village, perhaps for a long time. Only a few brave men will leave since practically no one not even the youngest want to venture into the forest where the tiger awaits them everyone meets near gurindra's house for the puja the ceremony dedicated to the gods of the forest this is vishnu the preserver protector of the dharma who is called upon to come down to earth and help humanity and when the gods finally do come down, embodied in these clay statues, it is time to utter the mantras of welcome and adoration and to make offerings in order to receive their blessing and protection. With Girindra is Adhir, the shaman, who knows the forest and the mantras needed to neutralize the tiger. Everyone is united to face the danger. Hindus and Muslims say the same prayer to the gods since those who leave for the forest are never sure of coming back. <laughs> this jar contains the holy water of the Ganges and will go with the expedition until the new wild honey replaces it. The only refuge in the forest will be the rowboat 
the only mother protector for Girindra and the other honey gatherers. The bow is therefore decorated like a holy altar. Considered a ritual spot, no one must ever step on the bow. But where are the swarms of bees and their honeycomb? They were here last year, just behind these trees. Bees always come back to the same place. The tiger is perhaps also present, invisible and magical in the forest. The feared guardian of the Sunderbonds, who watches and observes man without being seen. But how can one really know? Help from the gods is necessary. Adhir is a good shaman. He has survived several tiger attacks, and he knows how to ask the gods for help. His mantras neutralize the tiger at the right moment. The bees have come to the river. It's time to prepare the bulen, torches made with tiger palm leaves, which burn slowly and smoke out the honeycombs. <laughs> Girindra reminds everyone, wherever the tiger palm grows, there may also be a hidden tiger. The men must hurry since the tide descends quickly, and this is no time to let the boats run aground. Today, the departure will take place during high tide. The tiger often attacks man just as he enters the forest. Adhir the shaman asks for the god's blessing and repeats his mantras. Sometimes a long hike is necessary to find a swarm of bees and its honeycomb, perhaps under a tiger's watchful eye. The men know that there is potential danger every step of the way. Girindra has just spotted a swarm of bees and its honeycomb. Everyone thanks the gods. The shaman repeats the mantras for protection during the honey gathering. Giant bees from the Himalayas are the most aggressive in the world and will attack anyone who comes near the honey.
Thanks to the grace and protection of the forest gods, the honey harvest is especially abundant. The men don't forget to give thanks. This nectar of the gods is the second staple of a young child's diet after mother's milk. The sweet honey of the Sundarbans is also the meal that accompanies the dead beyond the forest and the visible world. At night, on the boats gathered in the middle of the river, the shaman and the men thank the gods for the successful day they have just had. With these words, Allah himself asked the peoples of the Sundarbans to write the history of Banabibi, the mother goddess of the forest to everyone, Hindus and Muslims alike. <laughs> Gurindra and Adhir the shaman recall a trick that honey gatherers discovered some years ago. <laughs> Knowing that the tiger attacks only from behind, the idea was to wear a mask behind one's head, representing a face. Thus, Girindra and the others went through the forest with eyes behind their heads. <laughs> Until the day when one had to admit that tigers learn quickly. In fact, to defend oneself against such a sly and powerful creature, the only solution is praying to the forest gods. Or the shaman's magical powers.
Meanwhile, in the village, like every morning, Namita and the other honey gatherers' women pray to the gods. They ask that their companions return soon with the precious honey, but more importantly, alive. These women have never gone into the forest, but they know that the tiger is hidden in the brush, waiting for the men, and that only prayer can avoid the worst. At the end of the season, it is more than possible that a village will be called Vidabapali, a village of widows. Each of the women is given a grant by the government if it can be proven that her husband was killed by a tiger. Death, however, even official, is still death. Thus, from forest to village and village to forest, the prayers of Sundarban men and women weave an untiring corridor of divine protection for the honey gatherers. The expedition can last for several days, sometimes as long as a month. Until Girindra's return, Namita will not wash with soap, nor will she put oil in her hair to comb it, thus respecting a custom which requires everyone to be united in the same rites, those of offering the forest gods the greatest devotion possible. This year again, she will not remove the ashes from the house until her man returns, according to the tradition. Bana Bibi, the Muslim princess and goddess of the forest, is everywhere. Her story, the great myth of the forest, the gods, the honey, and the tiger, is constantly being staged from village to village. <laughs> the daughter of a fakir from Mecca, but abandoned at birth in the forest, Banabibi, the Muslim princess, was raised by wild animals and became the mother goddess of all Sundarban's creatures. This incurred the anger of Dukin Ray, son of the Hindu god Shiva, who until then was the only all-powerful master of the forest. He sent his mother to fight Banabibi. In the end, Banabibi the Muslim was victorious. As the mother goddess, she united Hindus and Muslims in the face of their common danger. Ever since, like young Duque, anyone lost in the forest and in danger of being devoured by Duquen Ray, personified as a tiger, can be saved by the forest goddess, if he requests her help. are everywhere, and entering the forest is now a daily event, in spite of the danger. Led by the shaman, everyone struggles to continue on through the mud as quickly as possible. Every second is precious.
The shaman senses the tiger's presence. He immediately pronounces his mantras, accompanied by the others. Time is of the essence, since the tiger could attack at any moment. Kirindra is apprehensive and tells everyone to work faster. Once again, the men give thanks to Banabibi and Dukan Ray for the abundant honey and for being saved. This last generation of wild honey gatherers of the Sundarbans is carrying out rites that before long no one will be able to understand. Even today, the younger men don't want to go into the forest and are beginning to say it might be best to leave the honey for the tiger. This has been the way of life for centuries in the Sundarbans mangrove, still haunted by the tiger. This year alone, seven honey gatherers were killed by tigers just as they entered the forest. For Girindra, however, the honey harvest was a good one, thanks to the gods.